the lab on this week's Parsha is Parsha Kitavo, in which we're going to look at the format of the Parsha and break it up into three parts. And we're going to ask a quick question that the Ramban seems to bring up on the middle part of the Parsha. So first, let's see what those three sections are exactly in the Parsha. So Parsha Kitavo, the first part begins with the Akitavo, al Aritz Asher Hashem Lokecha, Nitein Lecha, Nachala, Yerishta, Be'ashavtava. Like God will give you an inheritance, and you'll be able to inherit this land, and you will be able to settle in it. Now, the continuation of the Parsha is going to discuss the At Habikurim, the bringing of the Bikurim, and it goes through this entire process of what one would say when they bring the Bikurim. And the bottom line becomes is, is that once God brings you into this land, you show your thankfulness that you are able to come from a foreign nation that did not have nationhood and a statehood, and you became a state when you landed into the land of Israel, and you show your appreciation by bringing those first fruits to the land of Israel. The second part of the Parsha discusses these giant stones that would be set up as soon as B'nai Israel would cross the Ardeen. That's the part of the parsha we're going to focus on and see what the Ramban has to say on it. And the last part of the parsha, perhaps most famously, discusses the Tochacha, the second time in the Torah where Bnei Israel is rebuked and told what will happen if they do not listen and if they do listen to God's voice. And consequently, if they do not listen to God's voice, then they unfortunately will be thrown out of the land. The focus seems to be in the central theme is that entering into the land of Israel and what happens when Bnei Israel follows the laws and when they are in the land of Israel, as opposed to not following them and then leaving the land of Israel on the Pasuk. That ends off the partial discusses the division up of the Nachalot, the different nations receive different parts of the land in order to keep Ushmartem and Tivrei Tazot. Okay, that's how the partial ends off. Now we're going to look at the Ramban on a parak of Zion, the very beginning of the parak discusses this aspect of writing on these giant stones. Now the Pasuk reads, alihen et kol zot, ovecha, when you cross the Arden, asher aritz, asher lach. Now, this Pasuk tells us, the next Pasuk, that B'nai Yisrael is supposed to set up these stones when they cross the Arden, and the key part that Ramban focuses on is that what is written on these stones and what is the purpose of them. It seems to be there's two clauses to the Pasuk. It says, when you cross the land, the river, that it will bring you into the land. It seems like they're in bonds my focus. What's this word of Laman? That you will write these stones and you'll have the stones. And because of these stones, you'll enter into the land of Israel. So what's the importance of these stones? That's what they're in bonds going to focus on. So if you look at their Ramban, on Perikhav Zion, Pasuk Gimel over there, he writes, he quotes a couple of different opinions on what was actually written on the stones, whether it be the Mount of Mitzvot or the 613 of them, and that's what it could be referring to. The Ramban quotes a second opinion that the Gemara says in Sota that it was really 70 different la- 70 different languages. Bashir Mashon, the Torah was written on these stones. And thirdly, the Ramban writes that it was really the entire Torah with all of the crowns and the Mesora, the way the letters were written uh, from Berisha to Adli Nekol Yisrael, the last line in the Sefer Torah and Bezot Bracha. So there are different opinions, but the bottom line is that Ramban is going to focus on this Pasuk of Laman. Here is the key line that we're going to focus on, and then we'll end off and wish everyone a good shot at this. Ramban notes, when it comes to this Pasuk, Lepidati, Laman Asher Tavo, Remez L'chol Divrei Torah. That entire Torah is around these stones, and Laman Asher Tavo is referring to that the reason why we will be able to enter into the land of Israel, God will bring you there, Laman Asher Tavo, is resting on the previous part of the Pasuk, which tells you to set up the stones. What's that mean? The stones represent the Torah, and the Ramban says this most eloquently. Yomar said, The Ramban tells us that really the key reason of writing these words of Torah on the stones is to tell you that B'nai Israel, you this monument that you're leaving behind you when you're entering into the land of Israel and crossing the Ardeen, the only reason you're getting into the land is due to your own merit, is due to the fact that you're keeping the Torah. God brought you to this point by establishing with to you and showing to you the value of the Torah through Har Sinai, through the Midbar. And now Ben Israel's up to you. It's in your hands. You'll have this monument to remind you of where you came because of the Torah and where you will go if you keep the Torah. And that monument will stay true to its word of this Evan of written in stone, so to speak, to have Ben Israel always etched into the hearts. And the key theme of the Parsha thus really comes out clearly. That Ben Israel, when they're brought into the land, they're told to thank God for bringing them there. And to recognize the Torah values of a Kartatov and going to the Kohen and bringing the Bikurim, it's a giant process, which leads us into setting up the stones, which tells us the centrality of the land of Israel and Torah to Israel. And specifically, if we keep Torah to Israel, then the end of the Parsha makes sense as well, which ends off with the Tochacha. The way in the end, it is a Bracha. With every Tochacha, there comes a Bracha. And that is how the 
the parsha ends off that Bnei Israel receives on Achala, he'll be able to enter into the land of Israel. And for this reason, we could sort of put it all together why the stones are such an important factor that they are repeated again here in this parsha, and we will see what happens in Sefer Yeshua later on if we continue into Nach. Have a good Shabbos, everybody.